Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. And we've got a really strange one today. A really weird update where YouTube is now backing actions by Nintendo. I never thought I'd see the day that happens. We also have some stuff about Nintendo Switch Online. Some numbers that we never get but have and aren't supposed to have. So we're going to go over that. A brand new Nintendo Switch remaster appears to possibly be in the works from a major studio. Nice. And look, we just have a lot to dive into. So without further ado, let's get into the news. Now our first story deals with Nintendo Switch Online because we now have some revenue numbers that we aren't supposed to have publicly, but we do for reasons that, well, basically the Brazilian government made a mistake. Essentially, Nintendo Switch Online netted Nintendo almost a billion dollars in 2021. So we got this information due to the filings over the Activision Blizzard acquisition in Brazil, which recently got approved by Cade for Microsoft. So that's one of the government bodies down for Microsoft. In fact, finding research, all three major platform holders were required to report their full digital financials to the government. And we now have the goods on Nintendo's 2021 performance and a general idea of why exactly Nintendo is not going to go away from the paid Nintendo Switch Online service. So Nintendo Switch Online makes up 31% of Nintendo's total digital revenue last year, which was $3.54 billion USD. That was their total digital revenue. This amounts to exactly $932 million USD. That's also 8% of the total earnings Nintendo makes on video games in 2021, which was $14.35 billion. Notably, Cade, which is the government entity that had to approve of this in Brazil, has retracted the original charts for all three companies after their initial publication late yesterday. This is because while the companies were required to disclose this information as part of the fact-finding measures for the major acquisition by Microsoft, that information did not need to be disclosed in the public filings. None of the companies at present give exact data like this in their yearly financials to the public or investors. Of note, Nintendo had 32 million active Nintendo Switch Online subscriptions at the end of last year, or roughly about one-third of Nintendo Switch's total install base. It's always really cool when we get a look internally at something like this that we actually aren't supposed to get a look at. Still, it's really interesting, and I'm just kind of glad that we have an idea now of exactly why companies do these paid online services, they make them a lot of money. Our next story deals with Sonic Frontiers because a new gameplay trailer dropped that's all about the combat in the game. And look, I could go into official press releases which do a good job trying to fluff everything up and we're not gonna focus on that because I, honestly, there's no new information in the press release. Look, what I'm very curious about is why it took so damn long for them to actually show the full combat of Sonic Frontiers. I get they don't want to show off everything. They want to leave some things for you to discover, especially in the skill tree and some of the new abilities that Sonic has. But what I also find really interesting is how the initial reception of the game after the IGN first event in June made people really, really negative. And now we get to today where we have this new trailer on combat that's not even released on the official channels. It's really strange how we got access to this trailer. And yet... All the reaction to it and the end of June from Nintendo's partner Showcase Direct on forward has been extremely positive for Sonic Frontiers. I'm not sure I have seen a video game pre-launch go from everyone thinks it's going to be garbage to everyone loving it in such a short period of time. So look, I don't know if Sonic Frontiers is going to end up being a good game, but Hey, I do know that I'm excited for it and already have my pre-order in. In fact, we'll put a pre-order link down in the description for you guys as well. Remember, it does come out, I believe, November 8th. So do you remember Team Asano from Square Enix? They're the ones that did the Bravely Default franchise, but also, well, Live Alive, right? That came out of nowhere. And they've been really big supporters of Switch and Nintendo over the years. Well, they did a 10th anniversary stream for Bravely Default because it is been 10 years since the original release can you believe it and they said the following in that stream 
Over the past 10 years, our team has grown larger and our capacity has increased. Looking at the opening movie of Bradley Default, which by the way, they remastered the movie for the stream in HD because it doesn't exist in HD officially. So I thought that was really cool. I feel like announcing a remaster of Bravely Default would be the best possible thing and something fans would desire. But for now, I'm unfortunately able to announce anything like that. Let's just say, for now. So it definitely sounds like it's something they are probably going to end up doing at some point, whether it's for the current Nintendo Switch or future ones or other platforms as well if it goes multi-platform. All I know is Team Asano is a really, really good developer, and I can't wait for their next Bravely Default, their next Live Alive, their next major game coming to Switch, let alone a full-on remaster of the original Bravely Default. That would just be utterly fantastic. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. Now, yesterday, the Pokemon company promised that we would get a new trailer showing off something for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and indeed we did. It showed off the Electric-type gym leader for the game. Now, the gym leader is an influencer, which is a really cool thing in general. They're like a live streamer and apparently really popular, and that's that's great. Uh, I just think it's very forward thinking. There's not really a whole lot of new shown in the trailer, but fans notice something in the trailer that they've actually done a couple times that makes fans kind of scratch their head. And that is, well, this particular gym leader is fully voice acted in the trailer, even though the Pokemon company has said there will not be voice acting in the actual game. So it's sort of false advertising of something that's not going to be in the game. Now, there are is fine print at some point that kind of notes, you know, that this is not indicative of the game. And we've seen this in a couple trailers for the game so far, but they're so willing to use voice acting. And in this case, it's just Japanese with English text. But I don't understand why they won't just put the voice acting in the game, even just for the lines that they're already reciting that are from the game. It's just strange to me that they would put all this effort into the advertising with voiceover work, but they won't put it in the actual game itself. I don't know, maybe this is something they're experimenting with, with advertising, and then the next Pokemon game, they'll put voice acting in. But it is just something strange that fans have noted and are a little bit frustrated about doesn't seem to have killed the hype for the game, but still, it is something. Now, if you remember earlier this week, we talked about how Nintendo was really upset about certain Japanese live streamers that were showing adult videos behind the ink in Splatoon 3 on live streams, and Nintendo was very unhappy about this in DMCA claiming. YouTube itself has now backed Nintendo's DMCA claims and have permanently banned a couple of accounts that were guilty for this. Now, the one of the accounts already had an apology video up a few days ago. We didn't decide not to cover that because the apology of video didn't really seem like a real apology. The person was wearing a dinosaur costume and weren't really giving that apologetic tone that we all know. It was kind of like a sorry we got caught, ha ha, it was a joke kind of thing. And look, showing adult videos on a platform like YouTube, we know is a violation of YouTube's policies, even in Japan. So yeah, YouTube cracked down, permanently banned a couple of accounts, terminated one other account, uh, and I think they banned a fifth account uh, somewhere in there for like six months or something. I don't know. This is insane to me that this even happened, that Nintendo had to step in for something to get done, how YouTube's automated system didn't find it. I guess it was hidden enough in the Splatoon gameplay. After all, all they did was chroma key out the ink and like OBS and put the video behind it. So I guess maybe there wasn't enough clips or enough audio from it over the gameplay to really trigger the AI bot. So I guess it was a way to work around it, YouTube's automated filters. But man... What a weird story, and I feel like this is something that we would only hear about in Japan. You know, there's some crazy things that happen here in the U.S., but a lot of people are just trying to push the boundaries of what some of the limitations of the law and limitations of these platforms are. This is a blatant violation, putting adult content on a platform that doesn't allow adult content. So take it for what you will, folks. We're in a really, really weird place where we have to talk about this kind of thing in regards to a Nintendo game. What? Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, I'd appreciate it if you drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and all that. I Look, I... I love making this content for you. I've got so much more in the works. Sorry this video actually came a little bit later today than the usual time slot. Had a bit of a mix-up last night with the podcast running way later than I planned. 
Things happen. Hopefully you enjoyed that episode of the podcast. If you missed it, be sure to go over to the Nintendo Prime Podcast channel and check that out. All right, folks. I will catch you guys in our next video. Thank you.